Hey, I'm outside the XR Pavilion here at GTC in San Jose, and I'm speaking with David Weinstein about volumetric video. Now, David, volumetric video has been around for a little bit, but it's now getting meaningful use cases, particularly in XR. So for those unaware, give us a bit of a primer on volumetric video and the different formats it comes in. Yeah, fantastic. Um, so it's one of the spaces that I'm super excited about. So what we've been seeing is two things happening at the same time. One, we have um, what are called NERFs, uh, or neural radiance fields, which is a way of representing a volume of data so that you can um, view it accurately from pretty much any angle. So this is uh, view-dependent rendering of captured data. Uh, we call them NERFs. Um, at the same time, uh, you have um, what are called Gaussian splats, which is really just kind of a point cloud format, so I can scan you as a bunch of different points and then render you using Gaussian splats. So each point ends up being replaced by kind of an area uh, with a Gaussian fall off, and it's view dependent again. So it ends up being a representation of solid objects that once you've captured it, I can then put on a VR headset or just move around on my desktop and view you from any angle. So while capturing a data set of me isn't particularly interesting, capturing a, a data set of a live performance, um, you know, for, for somebody performing on stage or a boxing match or a football match, that people want to see. And when they want to see it, they don't want to be fixed to whatever location a camera happened to be at. They want to be able to move around anywhere within the space, go up on stage, sit at the 50 yard line. And so what we're starting to see is broadcast companies starting to ask the question of, okay, if we're going to start to broadcast volumetrically, again, not just a 2D image, but something I can walk around in, what are the standards we need to make up for that? And so a couple of the demos here are showing off um, two things uh, really briefly to talk about them. The first one is kind of an exploratory framework where you can say, if I have 20 cameras around a stadium and they're HD cameras, the output of that, how high quality is it? How does it look? What if I double that to 40 cameras? Now how does it look? What if I make them 4K cameras? What if they're slightly miscalibrated in terms of, of color calibration? What ends up happening? And so being able to ask these sorts of questions so that we can eventually get to a standard for broadcast, we're just, as you said, at the very, very early stages of that. Yeah. So we're, we're showing off a, a system for exploring that parameter space. We also have a really cool demo where we've taken um, 20 very high quality uh, video streams from different cameras. Um, NVIDIA research team has figured out how to put those together, create one of those Gaussian splat data sets, but it's not just static, it's dynamic. So the splats move with the models over the time. So as the, as the boxer is punching, the splats are glued to his glove. And when you put on a VR headset and experience that, it's amazing. It yeah. feels like you're in the boxing ring with him. Yeah. Super cool. And what's unique about the Gaussian splat uh, methodology, as far as I'm aware, it's quite unique to it, is that it captures light and textural detail so faithfully to the source material, to the scene, um, and I think it's partly to do with the way you described it. These are kind of like these elliptical shapes with a fall off, kind of like right. a gradient, like an alpha map, if you will, per exactly. splat, and they overlap. Yep. So it's a different way of scanning reality as opposed to point clouds or, or polygonal uh, compression, like taking a real, real scene and making polygons out of it. That's right. This is more, it's really, really well suited to organic yeah. Uh, scenes, right? Organic subjects. Well put. That's exactly right. And it's a very compact, sparse representation, right? So if I wanted to represent you with a bunch of triangles, it would be a ton of data. Right. But um, what we're seeing is with some um, good compression technology and just the fact that I can sort of sparsely cover you with these splats, we get tremendous levels of compression to the point that we can stream it and you can go around and view it from any angle, yeah. right? So it's not like we're requiring you know, 600 megabits of, like, it's very compressed yeah. uh, and phenomenally accurate. Right, and this isn't the 3D video of, the, of yesteryear. It's not stereoscopic. It's, it is uh, volumetric. Yeah. It is truly volumetric. It's a three-dimensional, six degrees of freedom Free scene point. you could right. you can move around. It's very compelling in VR, obviously. It's well-suited. Um, but there are some great examples on um, 2D screens yeah. where you can move around with the keyboard and mouse or That's even right. a um, 
even a sort of a holographic display. Yeah. So I'll be, I'll be seeing the birth of a format that is kind of transmedia where you shoot Gaussian, you compress it or optimize it with this compression algorithm, and then you can deliver it to multiple displays. So you mentioned broadcast, yeah. which would be traditional 2D video screens, but then yeah. you can pick different angles and maybe yeah. quite dynamically, through to fully immersive glasses or VR uh, headsets where you have full six degrees of freedom, but it's from one format, right? One master format. That's right, so um, the other half of the NVIDIA research demo who are doing the time-dependent Gaussian splats mm -hmm. is they built a very efficient algorithm to take those 3D Gaussian splats and turn them into a light field, yeah. and then we're showing them off on these looking glass displays, yeah. which as you described, it's a flat display, but as you move around, you get parallax, so it, it's lenticular. You yeah. see different angles from it. Um, you can have 20 people standing around it, all experiencing this. It's beautiful, um, and yeah, you need these different formats, and the ability to efficiently go from one to the other yeah. uh, is what delivers the magic. Yeah, because there's different use cases. Not everybody is in a position in their day where they're going to put on a VR headset. They might want to experience this on a different format, so it makes sense to have a unified uh, format that can traverse all these formats. Yep. Well, that's fascinating stuff, and as a former broadcaster who works in media entertainment today, I see exciting storytelling possibilities for this format, and it's, and it's inspiring because it now makes you think of new ways of entertaining and engaging people which, in, which wasn't, simply wasn't possible before. Yeah, absolutely. It unlocks a tremendous amount of creativity, uh, and that's what we're showing with a bunch of these demos. Um, people come in, they sketch something, and gorgeous stuff comes out through the power of AI. Yeah, fantastic. For all of this and more, stay tuned to this YouTube channel, Scan AI Solutions, and keep an eye on our socials for everything else from DTC.